Welcome to Revolt Black News Weekly. I'm your host, Ebony K. Williams. Blacks beyond the border, from James Baldwin in Paris to Maya Angelou in Ghana, black Americans have long journeyed for a better life across the world. But when leaving the state, not all experiences abroad yield safe and secure treatment. In 2014, John Stevenson left America for his ecotourism dream in Palora, Ecuador. And as those plans became a reality, his older brother, Brunel, joined by his side. But within three years, an American dream for two brothers with booming success in a foreign land turned into an Ecuadorian nightmare. Their revolution to gain justice and freedom is tonight's prime story. What I learned from this experience is being a black man, the first question anyone asks me that's Ecuadorian is, where are you from? And I'll say, I'm American. And their response would be like, no, 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 you must be Haitian. There's already uh, a stigma being a black man and traveling. From Ivy League to incarceration, John, with his brother Ronell at his side, spoke to us about what they say is a wrongful conviction and a 34-year sentence that started with a tainted arrest. Around 4 or 5 in the morning, our door gets bust in. One set of gentlemen in ski masks with large guns yelling, everybody get on the floor, get on the floor, get on the floor. The prosecutor says, you know why I'm here, you know why I'm here. Tell me why I'm here. I said, I do not understand why you are here on my property. I haven't even seen a warrant. We see 50 or 60 indigenous floor that are from the Tawasa community roaming throughout our property. When we later come to find out that they were on the property since 3 in the morning, two hours prior to the police arriving to serve the warrant. One of the members of the Tawasa community comes and punches me in the face. Two dead bodies were buried on the Stevenson 125-acre property, which they believe members of the indigenous Shuar tribe nefariously planted. But why? The Stevenson brothers not only see their American nationalities as lawful impositions, but their blackness as overall obstruction. When we testify on the, uh, on the stand in front of the judges, the judges' own words is, what is two black Americans doing here in Ecuador? I think I've visited at least six or seven indigenous communities. When they had festivals, they would invite us. It was, it was a friendly atmosphere. When we would leave, certain people from the community would come back and say to us, like, hey, people are, are leery of your presence. What is a, a young black man doing here? How does he have the capability to own this type of property? So at the very beginning, uh, the case was handed around to several different prosecutors. At the very uh, at the onset, uh, that's a red flag to me. Attorney Jason Toblett is president of Global Liberty Alliance, an organization committed to combating violations of fundamental rights throughout the world. He's helped Americans out of Iran and Cuba, and he feels what happened with rapper ASAP Rocky in the summer of 2019 needs to happen with the Stevenson brothers. During the Trump administration, ASAP Rocky had been arrested in Sweden, and President Trump uh, dispatched the special presidential envoy to Sweden. If we're going to do it for ASAP Rocky in Sweden, how can we not do it for John and Ronell, who are in Ecuador, in our own hemisphere, in a place that's a lot more dangerous? But time is of the essence. First, because of a backlog court docket. According to Ecuadorian counsel, we're supposed to be given some guidance from the court at least a decision by the, by, by, by the by the which level of government will take this over. And hopefully we'll have a, a favorable decision on the petition to revise the sentence and then allow us to get in there and to argue all the technical issues that were not argued at trial. Which they claim is proved timely, DNA evidence would fully exonerate them. But more imminently of concern are the Stevenson brothers' safety in prison. But last month, a hundred people were killed in Ecuadorian prisons. Ten of those people were reportedly beheaded. They had a cellmate recently that had an AK-47. And the cops don't do anything. While the prison system in this country is atrocious, the most important thing is that Americans are aware of our situation. And with that, we bring in our panel. 
Joining us is Ronell and John Stevenson's father, Robert Stevenson, investigative YouTuber who's extensively reported on the Stevenson brother's story, Rob Christian. Welcome both of you to the show. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Yes. Now, Rob, you've reported a lot on the Stevenson brothers' story, as well as various other stories abroad. So when black folks actually cross the borders of this country, would you say they're safer before or after they leave? I'd actually say after we leave. I'd say we're safer living abroad. I, I actually lived in Medellin, Colombia for about three months. In the first two weeks, I heard gunshots. I still felt safer than I do in the U.S. Now, I think it's an, it's an issue of learning the culture, learning the language, and blending in. And I think with the Stevenson brothers, I think the issue that they had was an anomaly, an issue of a family or the head of a family or clan who is either attempting a land grab or a money grab, something like that. But I would honestly say I felt safer and I feel safer when I leave the U.S. Thank you, Rob. Uh, Mr. Stevenson, what role, if any, do you think that just being black Americans had for your sons versus their American identification? How much of their incarceration do you think is because they're black? Between 70 and 75 percent because they're black. I think the rest is about money. Every um, high-power attorney and even a couple of the ex-judges in Ecuador they said, the only reason you guys, your sons are in the predicament, first they're black and two, because they're Americans. Wow, actually said the words. Now, mm -hmm. Mr. Stevenson, you were with your sons in Ecuador about a week prior to their arrest. Now, had you not flown back exactly when you did, your sons believe that you very well could be incarcerated with them in this moment. What is your reaction to that? To be honest with you, it would have been myself and my wife would have been incarcerated. Mm. And, you know, my wife is a FAA official, and that would have been an awful, awful mess if that had happened. And we had gone down there to help my sons in the expansion they were doing on the farm because they had not so long before gotten an agreement with Tabasco Pepper Company to plant 20,000 peppers on the farm. Wow. And, and my sons were recruiting more employees to expand on the pigs that they, they were going to raise and the chickens that they were raising, uh, along with all the vegetables they were planting. Yeah. What I hear you saying, Mr. Stevenson, is that your sons weren't just uh, in, inhabitants of this country. They were doing extremely well financially, um, very savvy businessmen. Do you think that that, that success had a lot to do with their arrest? The farm had turned around from when we got it to something that looked like a little city. Okay, they had uh, wide roads through the farm. It was street lights on the farm. John set up a bar and or uh, a nightclub on the farm. He literally stole a lot of customers away from businesses in the town. After he got there, he started to do bodybuilding and then into bodybuilding contests and won Miss Ecuador twice. And then the rumor was going around that he might run for mayor of the town. And I, the Samarando, the head of the Samarando had been trying to run for mayor for at least uh, four or five times prior and didn't get through. How, how are you feeling right now emotionally, Mr. Stevenson? Are you able to have any communication with your son? And, and how are you and your wife doing? Um, you know, I think after four years of going through this ordeal, we have come to be a lot more settled and accommodating with some of the, the, the situation as it is. What is so troubling is that there were so many people who really liked John and appreciated John for what he was. And I saw certain key signs that he didn't see. And he said, when I go into town, some little business owner will say to me, John, I haven't seen you in a while. Were you locked up? And he would say, why would I be locked up? I don't do anything. <laughs> and, and I would say, you know, an old colloquial term, if a blind man says he's going to pelt you with a stone, he already has a stone in his hand. He can't go looking for a stone. And he would say, Dad, they can't do anything to me because I'm not doing anything. And I said, well, 
we can see because if people want you, they find a way to get you. Mm. Robert, let me ask you in your reporting, uh, any, any help uh, for the Stevenson brothers from America? That hits a nerve for me. Um, to be honest with you, that's where the U.S. is really lacking. This should have been mainstream, a mainstream story three, four years ago. And to be honest with you, I'm not seeing where the wheels are actually turning the way that they should be turning right now. How, how much of a role do you think uh, the blackness of the Stevenson brothers plays into that? Do you think they would be dealt with differently if they were white uh, people imprisoned abroad? I report a lot on Columbia, and I look at case after case after case where, you know, missing person or missing girl or missing guy, and if I look at the pictures, I mean, what conclusion can I draw other than it's the fact that they are black, that they are not, that the representatives are not moving faster and harder and as they should. Mr. Stevenson, I want to ask you before we go, uh, for those that do want to bring more mainstream attention to the case of your sons and want to make sure that this is handled with the appropriateness that it should, what, what can people do? What, what would be your ask of the, the diaspora who wants to make sure that your sons uh, get the, the justice that they do deserve? More pressure should be brought to bear on the State Department. More pressure should be brought on the embassies. People can try to reach out to their own representative. They can also ask to have bills. Uh, America contributes a lot of money in terms of grants to Ecuador. They can hold their funds and say, all we are asking you to do is to apply justice. Well, listen, Mr. Stevenson, uh, know that we are praying for, for you and justice for your son. Rob Christian, brother, we appreciate your time and expertise very, very much.